With the 15th Doctor's first series now at an end, and still five months to go until he returns to our screens, now seems like a good opportunity to take a look at what we know so far about this incarnation. This Doctor has now had 10 TV episodes, a few comics, and three novels, yet I'm still finding myself struggling to get a grasp on his character. Admittedly, we are only one series into his era, and some Doctors take most of their run to truly grow into the developed incarnation, but this is a chance to take a breather and consider what we have seen thus far. In this video, I will be analysing who the 15th Doctor is and how he differs from any regeneration we have seen before. In May 2022, it was announced that Sex Education star Shooty Gatwa would be taken over from Jodie Whittaker's 13th Doctor. The announcement deliberately left out Gatwa's incarnation numbering to conceal the surprise of David Tennant returning to play the 14th Doctor. Though not the first Black Doctor in Doctor Who's history, Joe Martin claimed that title as the Fugitive Doctor back in 2020. Gatwa's casting does mark not only the first Black male, but the first ever queer actor to play the part. It wouldn't be until December 2023, however, that we would see him in action in the last of the 60th anniversary specials, The Giggle. As a big fan of Gatwa's, I was over the moon with the announcement, as I heralded that his take on the character would be unlike anything we have seen before. The prospect of having a Doctor so fresh and so different was exciting to me, as I couldn't wait to see new life breathed into the show. It feels like something is coming, mm. and it could be like the biggest Doctor Who, or the best Doctor Who we've ever had. Shooting at was Doctor has brought totally new energy to the part, and has made watching the character somewhat interesting again. But just who is this Doctor? What are his key personality traits? Each Doctor has a particular defining trait. Whether it's the vain 10th Doctor, the dandy 3rd Doctor, the manipulative 7th, the romantic 8th, the arrogant 6th, the existential 12th, or the grouchy 1st, all Doctors can be summarised in a single word which captures the essence of their incarnation. At this moment in time, I am between two words to describe the 15th Doctor, joyous or emotional, so let's explore how he fits these descriptions. When Doctor Who was rebooted in 2005, a new level of character drama was added to the Doctor by giving him the trauma of the Time War which left him as the last of his species. This was a contrast to Classic Who, where though there were some continuing threads and aspects of the Doctor's personality that did evolve, it was always a show more focused on week-to-week -week adventure as opposed to long narratives. As the rebooted show went on, more lore was added to the Doctor's life, and his experiences grew and changed as a result. From the destruction of Gallifrey twice, to several companions meeting dramatic ends, a lot of baggage was created for the character. This baggage is what made the Doctor interesting throughout this time. The Twelfth Doctor even spent his entire era existentially contemplating whether all that he had done was for a good reason. However, the Fourteenth Doctor's era sought to remove this. Much of the fallout of the series before was dealt with in his episodes before he ultimately decided to retire. Now, there is some debate and uncertainty about exactly where the Doctor's timeline goes after the events of the Giggle, but I understand it as follows. Because of the Toymaker's realm and meddling with events, 14th Doctor's regeneration did not lead to his successor spawning in the immediate instant after regeneration. Instead, it pulled the 15th Doctor from later in his timeline to the earlier point of his regeneration, making this his origin. As a result, we learned from this that the 14th Doctor would go away and retire to deal with his trauma and spend some time coming to peace with it. I'm fine because you fix yourself. We're time lords, we're doing rehab out of order. This 14th Doctor would then simply fade away, and the already fully functioning 15th Doctor could continue his adventures, free of trauma, regrets, guilt, and pain. This would be a Doctor less on a moral crusade and more just to explore the universe and have fun. The 15th Doctor finds the universe infinitely entertaining. He is amazed by small curiosities, he finds fun in the smallest of moments, and this is truly something refreshing to see. After having so many miserable Doctors, having someone fun again is a real contrast. This is a really nice quirk, and something different to see, but it does take some serious adjusting. I have become so used to seeing the Doctor dark and traumatised that seeing a new incarnation without those elements almost makes him feel disconnected. It's only when the darker, more traditional Doctor emerges that he truly feels like himself. My favourite moment so far of this Doctor has been his Big Bang speech in Boom. I'm a much bigger bang than you bargained for. I'm a lot more explosive than I look, and honey, I know how I look. Put a quantum chain reaction through me and I will shatter this silly little battlefield of yours into dust. All of it, in a heartbeat, into dust. Gatwa delivered this with such presence and gravitas that you truly fear him in that moment. In the Boom commentary, writer Stephen Moffat described this as Mean Doctor, and stated that there would be more Mean Doctor in the upcoming Christmas special Joy to the World, so I look forward to seeing more of these elements. 
For me, the Doctor should be someone who is thrill-seeking and hunting adventure, but he also should be someone who can topple empires and carry threat when he needs to. While the 15th Doctor's fun-loving attitude is something new to see, there just isn't quite enough of a balance yet to make that weight and history feel real. And, of course, a lot of that weight was dealt with by the 14th Doctor, but I don't think all of it should be removed outright. The other word I use to describe this Doctor is emotional. I think he's a Doctor of enormous joy and passion and emotion. It's probably the most heartfelt you've ever seen the Doctor. And this is a trait that can be seen in every single one of 15's episodes so far. Seriously, I'm pretty sure he has cried in every single episode. This shows great acting abilities from Gatwa, but for a Doctor who is supposed to be free of baggage and trauma, he sure does cry a lot. This is something that is getting quite tiresome for me. Some of the previous Doctor's most powerful moments have been when they cried, so seeing the Doctor do this every episode loses the impact. Seeing the Doctor cry should rip your heart out, it should be the character who rarely allows himself to be so vulnerable, totally breaking down and exposing their true feelings. But instead we see the Doctor do this all the time. I fear that after a while the big moments won't feel like big moments and will instead be par for the course. Again, Boom had the best demonstration for this, in the scene where Ruby is seemingly killed as Gatwa let out a truly guttural cry. Only four episodes into his era, this felt like a huge emotional moment. But looking back, it's just one of many throughout the series. Allowing these moments to be more sparing will allow them to have a much bigger emotional impact. In some ways, I see the 15th Doctor, and the 14th Doctor for that matter, as a response to the 13th. Whittaker's take on the Doctor similarly started as an enthusiastic, joyous performance, something Colin Baker has famously talked about on several occasions. I think she's wonderful. She, she, she has brought for me something that I haven't seen in Doctor Who from any of us, mm. which is joy. That joy. She would always be searching for adventure, distracting herself with small projects, infused by silly childish things, and just trying to have fun. These traits are very, very similar to the 15th Doctor, but where they differ is on the emotion. The 13th Doctor took her trauma and locked it away. She would never express it, talk to her companions about it, or let others know she was struggling. When all these suppressed emotions were then placed into the personality of the 14th Doctor, the most emotional regeneration up to that point, all those feelings came flooding out. As a result, the 13th Doctor is a kind of yin to the 15th Doctor's yang. Two sides of the same coin, but dealing with things on opposite ends of the spectrum. While the 13th Doctor buried her feelings away, the 15th Doctor brings them all out for all to see. I quite like the idea of the Doctor hiding these feelings away, but after a while it started to give Whittaker quite a stunted and restricted performance. While, on the other hand, constantly wearing his heart on his sleeve makes the 15th Doctor quite repetitive and tedious at times. There is definitely a balance here that is also yet to be struck. Of course it is very early days in this Doctor's run, with Series 15 to be released next year and the possibility for more with Gatwa, saying they haven't got the balance right or he hasn't quite developed yet, will probably be a common theme of this video. This is more just to take what we know so far and speculate on how that might grow. The joy, for example, may totally wear away by the time 15's regeneration comes, similar to how the 10th Doctor regenerated as a much darker mood compared to his Series 2 self, so this could make for a really interesting development. Maybe a bit like the 12th Doctor, but in reverse. While he started grumpy and ended as a lot of fun, 15 might do the opposite. Maybe showing this emotion will backfire on the Doctor and he will learn to strip it back. Who knows? It's still very early days. A major thing that I have struggled with is 15's wardrobe. I absolutely adore his brown leather coat look and the initial orange jumper reveal outfit has really grown on me, but the lack of any cohesive silhouette bothers me. It seems like such a minor thing, but Series 14 really made me realise how important it is in getting to know a Doctor. I remember very clearly when Capaldi's costume was first revealed, with the description, no frills, no scarf, just 100% Rebel Time Lord. This very clearly set the tone for who that Doctor would go on to be. It's also interesting that 12 very rarely wore the same outfit twice. There are even some episodes where he wears several different outfits throughout the episode, but it always followed the same uniformity and style. The blue crombie and shirt began as his default look, but soon hoodies and t-shirts were being introduced, and then checkered trousers, and then we saw the coat change colour, but it always remained the same sort of image. This is what I would have preferred for 15. His Ruby Road outfit can be so easily varied. A change of shirt, a change of trousers, an accessory, it would be so easy to do. Whenever I see him in this outfit, or the few variations thereupon, he feels instantly so doctory. But some of the other costumes they've had him in just look so ordinary. As much as I've praised Boom, his outfit here is so unlike any other he wore that it takes a moment for you to see beyond Shutigatwa into seeing the Doctor. I never realised how important that silhouette was in helping a Doctor feel convincing. The show seems to be using the brown coat costume as his default look by having him change back into it at the end of series 14 and using it on all the wider material. 
but I just wish he would actually wear it more often. Some may love that his wardrobe is constantly expanding, there have been some great costumes, but I just like when a Doctor is instantly recognisable and anomalous to their surroundings. A bit more cohesion with 15's wardrobe would go a long way in legitimising this incarnation. I use the word legitimise because there are times I struggle to see the Doctor in 15. I've said for a number of years that my biggest determining factor in how Doctory someone feels to me is how well they command a room. This was why I struggled getting to know the 13th Doctor, because there were times she felt lost in the background of a scene. I like my Doctors to walk into a room and instantly take charge. I haven't seen the 15th Doctor quite get this opportunity yet. Even when he stood before Unit in the series finale, it still felt more like an ensemble working together, as opposed to the Doctor leading them into battle. This Doctor seems to prefer covert operations and blending in with his surroundings, which I guess makes for a nice character trait, but just doesn't feel as consistent with previous incarnations. Another thing I like to say is that the best Doctor scenes are the ones where you can picture any other Doctor in their position and the scene would still fit. For example, the Twelfth Doctor's Mighty War speech in the Zygon Inversion was so perfectly delivered by Capaldi and matched his incarnation so well, but every single time it's been read out by a different actor at conventions, they've always managed to do it justice too. 15's specific speech pattern of calling people honey and babes just doesn't fit with any other Doctors for me. Every other actor brings part of themselves to the role, but this just feels a little too shooty gap for me. I don't want the Doctor to be talking in the same way the actor would in interviews. On a similar point, scenes like the Doctor dancing in the church on Ruby Road or kissing Rogue just did not work for me. Like, could you imagine William Hartnell in a club? These just didn't feel accurate representations of who the Doctor has been for thousands of years. I am all for Doctors carving out their own identities and putting their own spin on it. Tom Baker essentially played himself for seven years, but when that veers too far away from the personality we've become so accustomed to, you stop seeing the character and instead see the actor. As sick as the audience has become of Daleks in recent years, I think they are a great tool to legitimising a Doctor. Eccleston faced them in his sixth episode, Tennant in his first series finale, Smith three episodes in, Capaldi two episodes in, and Whittaker in her first special. Though we have seen Gatwa face returning villains in the form of the Toymaker and Sutek, these are both villains who hadn't been seen for 50 years or more, so don't quite have the same effect. Having the 15th Doctor face the Daleks would be a great help towards recognising this new incarnation as the Doctor we have always known and loved. Much of Russell T. Davis' aim with his return to Doctor Who was to win back the under 35's audience share, an age range he had been massively successful reaching with It's a Sin. Despite the low viewing figures of series 14, the highest age range watching the show was this under 35's demographic. Casting a youthful Doctor and a companion who was only a year old when Christopher Eccleston's ninth Doctor first graced our screens is a clear indicator of this. But what struck me about the pairing of the 15th Doctor and Ruby Sunday was how Gen Z they feel, despite Gatwa actually being a millennial. Though some of the dialogue was quite on the nose and at times was reflective of a 61 year old man thinking he knows how young people talk, on the whole, 15 and Ruby reminded me of people I know and the way my friends and I talk to each other. It felt like a very good representation of this age group until I remembered the Doctor is thousands of years old, even more if you believe in the Timeless Child. That ancient wisdom and grandiose is totally missing from the 15th Doctor, replaced entirely with a very trendy and modern young person of the 21st century. This does allow a lot of relatability with the audience from both characters, but I've never thought that is the Doctor's role. The reason the companion is so commonly an ordinary Earth girl is to provide that relatability with the audience so that they can understand what the Doctor is doing and what's going on. The Doctor has never, for me, needed to fill that role, but looking back, that's exactly what RTD did with his last era. The ninth and 10th Doctors were easily the most human Doctors, despite the Time War grief, and the audience massively related to them as a result. There is a reason why David Tennant remains such a household name to this day. My image of the Doctor has just never been this. I've always liked the Doctor to be very mysterious and otherworldly. I thought it was very interesting when the Doctor said this. And there was a different Doctor back then, kid. Great enigma. Still can't shake it off. I'm trying. Because it sort of exemplified why I'm struggling to connect with this incarnation. He says he's trying to shake off the enigma and become more open and relatable, but that doesn't feel like the role of the Doctor for me. I can never see this Doctor being as eccentric as Pertwee, as unpredictable as Baker, or as Machiavellian as McCoy. And of course, he doesn't need to be any of these things because he's a new Doctor now, but I think some of these personalities should remain. The Doctor should be a science geek. Even when he's pretending not to be, he still is. I don't get that vibe from this Doctor. We have seen him show great intelligence, but I just don't find it very convincing. As well as this, I have always been in the camp that I prefer Doctors to be totally asexual. I think it comes back to that idea of imagining other Doctors in the same position. 
This was why I struggled with Rogue. Unlike some nutters online who freaked out about the Doctor kissing a man, this didn't bother me. I don't care whether it's a man or a woman, the Doctor shouldn't be kissing anyone in my opinion. Can you imagine Patrick Troughton doing that? He had a family once upon a time on Gallifrey, but that was a very long time ago. Since then he has become that ancient wisdom, that mysterious being who travels the stars. Domesticating him with things like romance ruin the mystery and make him too relatable. I have never wanted the Doctor to be relatable. I want him to be funny, entertaining, intelligent and heroic. There was also never any friction with Ruby, so we only ever saw them as supposed best friends. The relationship was really quite boring and mundane. This attempt to make the Doctor cool just isn't very interesting to me. I want high concept character drama from Doctor Who, not representations of people I meet in my everyday life. Overall, my feeling on the 15th Doctor so far is that he is currently severely underbaked. There are elements that I think would grow into something that will be really interesting to see, but from what we have seen until now has been a very human, very different Doctor. Sometimes different is good and change just takes some adjusting, but at the moment it just feels slightly outside of the boundaries of what the character of the Doctor should be. I do think there is room to improve though. While the Doctor is currently filled with joy and emotion, this might change later down the line. Otherwise, I can't really imagine where that would go and what journey this incarnation is currently on. This video was not a review of Series 14 itself, it was to talk purely about the 15th Doctor, but maybe a run of much stronger episodes than the Series 14 offerings will sell me properly on this incarnation. I have really enjoyed what I've seen of Shooty Gatwa so far, but I'm just struggling to connect with him on a deeper level. I currently don't believe he is the Doctor, I'm only seeing Shooty Gatwa, but I would like this to change going forward. Maybe even some rewatches of Series 14 will change that fact. Going forwards, I would like to see 15 in a fixed costume with minor variations. I would like to see the crying saved only for sparing moments. I would like him to feel a bit weird and distant and alien. I would like him to go on an emotional journey that challenges his worldview or brings up some of his old trauma. I would like a companion totally unlike himself to create some friction and a more interesting dynamic. I would like to see him face the Daleks, and most importantly, I would like the scripts to not rely so heavily on shooting Gatwa's own personality. Save it for the behind the scenes interviews. I love Gatwa a lot, but when I watch my favourite show, I want to see my favourite character. With series 15 already filmed and in the bag, it's unlikely any of the audience complaints with series 14 will be improved upon, so we will just have to hope that Gatwa has settled into the part, RTD has decided what to do with the incarnation, and that things will naturally improve next time around. Because, otherwise, we're going to have to hope that Disney renew the show for series 16.